All right, man, what's happening? It's your boy, <clears throat> once again, Cool Water, the digital dope man, coming to you live and in full effect with another episode in the Barroom Chats podcast, where we talk about topics in the area of entertainment, politics, business, culture, health, and education. You can find Barroom Chats Podcast on Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com or visit Is Hip Hop Dead for latest episodes and updates uh, for the podcast and things of that nature. So <clears throat> we're going to get into a little something different today. And I probably had this conversation before in the past. It is uh, nothing new, but it's been the latest and the hottest topic <clears throat> going around in the hip hop community. And we're going to talk about DJ Vlad. <coughs> Excuse me. Many of you probably, I'm going to say a lot of you don't even know Vlad, but Vlad TV and. Uh, the YouTube channel garners about four or five million visitors a month. And um, he is a power player, if you will, in the internet marketing. Well, I'm not going to say internet marketing. In the hip hop videography space dealing with the hip hop culture and things of that nature. So Vlad has came under fire <clears throat> from a few of his cohorts because he said some comments about the minister Farrakhan that a lot of folks in the hip hop community did not like. And one of Vlad's cohorts is Lord Jamar, one part of the Brand Nubian group. And many of you remember Brand Nubian back in the day. And they had a couple, of, they had, you know, they had a lot of bangers. They was hot. They was hot back in the early, uh, mid to late 80s. Um, and Lord Jamar is part of that group. And then there's uh, Godfrey. And I think Godfrey is a comedian. But Godfrey and, and Lord Jamar, I think, still kind of have a relationship. Um, Vlad, for many of you who probably have never seen what he looked like, he's a white Jewish immigrant. Kind of got red hair, big head. And uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they see the interviews but they don't ever see Vlad. So Vlad has came off from behind the camera over the course of a few years and people are able to put the face with the name now. Vlad also had confrontation with Rick Ross some years ago about some stuff that he put out that Rick didn't like it. So Rick, I guess, and his team cracked him upside his head. He sued Rick for several dollars and, and I think that's how that ended. So... Vlad TV, or should I say DJ Vlad, Vladimir, who is a, I think he's a Russian Jewish immigrant, has lately came under fire from the hip hop community for saying some things about, saying some things incorrectly and inaccurately about Minister Farrakhan. Now, the statement that I heard the minister say that Vlad did not really like was he said, take a stone and throw the stone at Satan, i.e. some of these evil, I think, uh, Jews and, and, and Arabs and other immigrants that were not about the truth of what truth stands for and 
Vlad took that literal statement. He took that statement to be literal. You know, throwing rocks at Jews. So, one of the things that we have to discuss, and I'm saying this about white folk, because any white person, they hear this, you're going to have to deal with it. Y'all do not know how to differentiate differentiate between the reality and the fantasy. For you all, shit is literal. If I say that's a bad car, and I'm talking to one of the homies, he understands that's a that car is nice, it's fly, it's fabulous, it's amazing. But if I say that to somebody that's of Caucasian descent. They're going to think the car is, 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 is not good. There's something wrong. If I say, man, I killed that sandwich. The homie going to know what I'm talking about. Not a lot of white folk. Now, if you came up around a culture and bad been around the culture, he know that he knows some of the languages, but he still suffers from the deficiency of not being able to understand the analogies. You see, uh, in which case, Minister Farrakhan was not speaking, deliberately throwing rocks at people to harm them. I mean, like, you got to use common sense. What 87-year-old man going to go out there and tell people to go throw rocks at somebody? That's common sense. He was using an analogy, and the analogy was used the stone to kill Satan, to kill the evil. Use the veil of truth to, to prevail against the evil forces and the dark wickedness of this world. But, but Vlad took it literally because why? He's part of the other white meat culture. The people that I told you about that started with the letter J. He's part of that culture. Now, see, I never knew he was part of that culture. Until he said he was part of that culture. I said, well, that makes all the difference in the world. That makes all the difference in why he moves the way he does. See, see, when they come from the immigrants, come over here from Europe and all these other places, they come over here, they get the memo. And the memo is find the ethnicities that you can work with and profit from. Hence the reason <coughs> most of these <coughs> folks... In, 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 in my neighborhood, because I'm in the hood, make thousands of tens of thousands of dollars a day, and we don't profit. The check cash in place, ran by the Pakistani. The gas check, the gas stations is Pakistani Arabs. <coughs> the Asians got the nail salons, beauty supply stores, Koreans and A, and well, you know, you might as well say Koreans, Parisian, Koreans and Chinese. Then I got Derek Green across the street. That's the East Indian. <clears throat> you know, then you might find some Africans that got something, but they typically don't be able to get in the hood hood. They ain't able to get, they be on the outskirts somewhere selling their little, you know, food and paraphernalia. But that's the, that's the culture. That's the norm. So what did he do? He came over and identified a market, a niche market. And everybody knows that black folks don't have no barriers around their, their, their economy. And he became, and he became a DJ. He was spinning records for a number of years. And then he started out doing a few ventures, probably hooked up with some of the brothers and tried to do a few things and some of it didn't work. Some of it did. But as he grew in popularity, he began to, uh, make us make, 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 make a bed for himself inside the hip hop community. Now he'll even tell you he's a guest inside of hip hop, but as he grew his channel, as he grew his, his internet platform, his web properties, as I heard him once say, uh, he began to ascend in the world of wealth. Now, he may be worth five, ten million dollars. That's on the low end. For most folks in the internet, that's high. 
But in the hip hop world, that's on the low end. If you're doing five million dollars or you worth five million dollars in hip hop, you're not really worth a whole lot. You probably gotta you you probably lead a less stress free life, but you're not really of influencer popular culture type cat. Uh, like some of these, like, like, like we take KRS one. I looked his net worth up. It said he about 5 million. Okay. Well, KRS one, in my opinion, didn't never really exploit as many opportunities as he could have. That would have catapulted him in a $20 million club. Rakim worth about a meal to five. He didn't, he didn't take a whole lot of profit from a whole lot of opportunities. A lot of these dudes just did music back in the early eighties. And then they ascended. I seen something with, uh, where they found the, the killers for Jam Master J, and then this dude named Out of Profit does a video, and the video was relative to Jam Master J was supposed to be selling drugs because Run DMC, even though they was as big as they was, their contracts probably wasn't making no major dough. <clears throat> they didn't really get the wealth that they really, really, really supposed to get till after the later years in their career when Russell Simmons was able to go on there and renegotiate contracts and get them more money. Hence, Russell Simmons getting richer in the process because he was the manager and his brother, Run, was his little brother. So he had an interest in making sure his little brother was going to eat and he ate in the process. You see? So, so, so Vlad's been able to acquire a certain amount of wealth and, and we'll say off the black community because, again, that's the niche target audience that he chose. You did? So him being offended by something Farrakhan said and being part of the other white meat culture is nothing new. Mr. Farrakhan has been getting criticized for generations by the other white meat cultures and other cultures alike that even black folks who don't like the message. The message that he's preaching is solidarity, group economics, and working cohesively with your own people to build a power base. He's spawning off of the Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey. He's spawning off of, 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 of others, Colin Powell, um, you know, anybody hollering black economics and black power, black power, black, black Panthers, whatever, that whole little nucleus. So when you hear the truth and it stings, you don't like it. But the problem again that white folk have, and if you white and you know me, I'm going to tell it to you because I've talked to some of you, you don't know slang. You can't interpret the analogy. You don't know the metaphors that will allow you to understand what the man was saying. The man was not literally telling you to pick up a rock and go out and harm the other white meat culture that's out here in the world today. He's been using his Quran and his Bible and his truth to do that. He's been bringing that type of pain in him. He ain't using a gun. He's using his tongue. So for the lad to get offended, turn around and then put out something in regard to that, that spawned his other cohorts to bring him into their area of jurisdiction and talk about that you needed to apologize for doing that. And he did not want to do it because he felt he was justified because he felt that that comment was solid and solidified by the minister and that it was meant to demean, to demean and harm those individuals that looked like him. But again, lack of understanding in metaphorical content, lack of understanding in, 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 in what slang is, even though he's in the culture and he hears it and has been around it and has picked up some of the, the information, he still is not a scholar in hip hop music. He knows the artists. He knows the music as far as who playing what, but he's not a scholar. He's not of the culture. Hence the culture vulture nature that some of these individuals have. Because they come in real respect because they know they get their ass beat if they don't. You see?
They'll get their ass beat if they don't. So they come in very, very respectful. But you take somebody like Ian Baker. Ian Baker is another white dude over there doing his thing. He building. Interviewing black artists. See, you see, the thing of it is, we are the animals in the zoo. They come to people come to the zoo to see us because why? We Michael Jordan. We Magic Johnson. We Tiger Woods. We Oprah Winfrey. We Tyler Perry. Uh, we Barack Obama. <clears throat> You know, we, 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 uh, 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 Martin Luther, King. Martin Luther King, we Malcolm X, we Minister Farrakhan, we, 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 we Fannie Lou Hamer, you know, we, 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 we Henrietta Lacks, you know, we, 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 we all of that, you understand? We the gods, and when you the gods, your children want to watch you play and work because they trying to figure you out, they trying to figure out how you move. They trying to figure out how you move. You dig? So with that being said, him and Lord Jamar interacted. I did not watch it, but I overheard Lord Jamar's commentary and Vlad didn't want to apologize. Now he made the correction and did the edit on the video, but he didn't want to apologize. But here's my thing. And I'm saying this out to Lord Jamar. I'm saying it to my partner, Raheem Shabazz, because I know he had an issue with it and he's been on, you know, we have to, we have to stop minoring in the minutia. Fuck that cracker and whatever he's standing for and whatever he doing. If he off your fuck you list, then he's off the list. See, it doesn't matter. You know, we'll say cancel culture again. And I'm going to say this to a lot of y'all. You can't cancel a creative. See, for everybody that says they canceling Vlad, it's another thousand that's going to show up that ain't never heard of him. See, he's beyond your ability to suppress him now because he has reached a plateau with viral marketing and, 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 uh, uh, you could say search engine, all that stuff now rewards him from people from all over the world. It doesn't matter. Then you have a black audience that still supports him. We not on code where every black entertainer, athlete, politician, musician, uh, educational advocate is cutting him off. Everybody ain't on code. And they're not going to be on call because they're not going to see the validity in it because there's so many people that already disagree with the minister. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It's not heartfelt in a sense to even get over emotional about what the white boy do because he acting in his nature. That's who he is. But what you can do is build up your situation so that you reach the point where you got is just as much influence and you can turn around and do like Malcolm X did in the movie, put your index finger up, point to the right and everybody move to the right because you said so. That's really what goes on. That's really what it has to go on. So the culture vulturing nature, that's part of their nature because they don't have no talent. You can't, you, they, they don't have no talent. So they got to get with somebody, man, who they can pimp. They got to get with somebody who they can pimp. So the title of this going to be DJ Vlad, Culture Vulture, and the Black Robin Hood. And why do I say Black Robin Hood? Because we have certain black individuals who will try to save the situation and save the culture as a whole. But there are other factors that have not been done by those Black Robin Hood individuals to ensure that their movement is really worth their movement, if, you, if I'm making sense. So now I'm like Dr. Claude Anderson. We got to stop minoring in the minutia. We got to stop minoring in the minutia. The same energy that you all are putting into canceling Vlad should be the same energy that you all are putting into canceling black politicians who deliberately disrespect the culture and does not do not help us move forward. Put the same energy into black educational leaders who deliberately do not help push black education for children. Put the same energy into 
black economics and those individuals who are working tirelessly to suppress black economics. Fuck this white boy and what he stand for. If you don't go want to go on the show, don't go on the show. You know, if you got a game plan, you go on the show. You know, as Lord Jamar said, when well, you're going to be looked at as a lame man, don't nobody give a fuck about that shit, man. If you planning and plotting and you working your plan, you pimp Vlad like Vlad them been trying to pimp you. Period. He said some shit y'all didn't like. That's what's up. Y'all dressed it. That's what's up. If he cut off the list, cut him off. It ain't going to be the last time somebody does, does say something to Minister, Mr. Farrakhan, say something that people don't like. The Washington Post, the New York Times, uh, um, Time Magazine. I mean, the list goes on. They've been criticizing the minister, man, since he's been in the game. What's new? Hell, black ministers criticize the minister. T.D. Jakes don't fool with Minister Farrakhan. He didn't talk bad on the man. He don't fool with him. You ain't finna catch Kraft Low Dollar fooling with him. You understand what I'm saying? These people not fooling with the minister because the message is too strong and they too aligned with white culture to want to get in bed with Minister Farrakhan and do it the, 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 the right way. Vlad, Vlad got a platform. Some of you all know his platform is making him hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, well, the question would be, I need to get my weight up so I can get my platform making that so I can do what? Influence the culture. We got folks in hip hop, man, who got big platforms, man. They don't they don't go to bat for us. It's been a lot of cats who 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 don't like the fuckery that he own. Okay, cool. Then you deal with it. The way you deal with it, however you deal with it. If canceling him is what you think going to get the job done, okay, cool. But again, me being a creative myself, you can't cancel a creative because it's always somebody new coming behind you. Once you get so far out in the internet, ain't no pulling back. Once you get to a place where you beyond reachable, ain't no way to pull back. You got to have mega dollars, massive media exposure to really put a dent in that person's uh, situation. It's not going to happen. So how about we practice the five group levels that Dr. Claude Anderson spoke of, which is <clears throat> get your money up, get the judicial system, get the political system, get the media and get the education. How about we practice that? See, when we got all of those in, uh, in situations in pocket, then you can go toe to toe with somebody like Vlad and it's going to hit him where it hurts. See, but it's not gonna hit him where it hurt right now because there's not there's not enough there's not enough individuals cohesively with big platforms who's working to slow down dude's disrespectful nature. It's not gonna hurt him. You spend a lot of time and energy trying to, you know, when you could be continuously putting that same amount of energy in your thing. If he disrespectful, cut him off. You would cut anybody else off or either whoop they ass, one of the two. See, the thing about it is he got the memo. I got a book here that I, I, I'm i still yet to read. And I mentioned it on other podcasts before. An Empire of Their Own. How the Jews Invented Hollywood by Neil Gabler. I suggest you all get it. All of the other white meat culture knows that entertainment is black culture. They know it. But because they're not talented, they understand that I have to control it in order for me to profit from it. You get a few black individuals, man, who try to, you know, build record labels like Master P. Master P built a record label, but he had to do what? In order for him to become the man, he had to do business with priority. He had to do business with Universal. And, 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 and these are mega, mega conglomerate corporations. P don't have the kind of money that Universal Records got. He don't have it. That's a that's a that's a Jewish owned, German Jewish based record company. He don't have the type of money. 
But then when you look back and you say, okay, well, yep, he got an empire, but the empire has not overly, overtly impacted the major black culture in its entirety. Hasn't impacted it. Death Row Records didn't impact the black uh, economic society in its entirety. Didn't impact it. Uh, Bad Boy Records. Uh, what else? Um, who else? Bad Boy Records, Rockefeller Records, Def Jam. Uh, we have big business out here by some of these black individuals. Um, and, and, and their and their business has not been able to grow to a level where it has major, major impact. Now, like Tyler Perry, he's impacting uh, black society at the moment. He's impacting black society at the moment due to his ability to have built his own piece of land and his ability to has been able to... Um, start to hire folks in other areas finance accounting uh publishing you know things of that nature he's been he's been instrumental in getting that stuff done and it has been it has been beneficial to him um but in the in the whole you know vlad got the memo identify target market and then begin to go build your presence in that market Sell that, sell that market goods, services, and products. And that just so happened to be entertainment. Because that's what we dominate, but we don't control. See? We dominate it, but we don't control. Again, the majority of the white population does not, I don't give a fuck how much hip hop and they do they're never going to total and in its entirety grab every concept of the culture because they not of the culture we slang all day long eminem he, he he know a lot of slang he understand a lot of the culture he didn't been around but it's some stuff i bet you if you get around eminem and you get to saying some shit that he ain't never heard before he gonna be looking dumbfounded like all white folk would because it's not in him it's not his dna See, it's not his DNA. <clears throat> so for all the Robin Hoods out there, man, that wanna that wanna that wanna do uh good in the hood and 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 rob from the rich and give to the poor, understand you're not really making a major impact in society until you're in a position where you can do uh, financially, economically, the same thing to the person that, that's oppressing you. Um, and then turn around and then help your own people. See, see, it's about changing the mindset. We can preach all day, but it's about changing the mindset, the mindset of the people so that they begin to take a life of their own. You know, they just had, um, foundation of black America conference. Now I wasn't there. Heard it was pretty good. Okay. But there's a large population of people that ain't even going to agree with that 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 type of ideology that the Tariq Nasheed and 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 Yvette Carnell and 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 uh Tone Antonio Moore Tone talks they ain't gonna be with all they're not gonna agree with all that a lot of people still think they from Africa they holler when I'm from over there not knowing that some, the majority of them is, is from over here so it's 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 an educational thing more so than it is a moralistic thing. You see, the more culture you get, the more you understand your culture, the more history you receive, the more you can start diving in this and looking at it from a different angle. Cares what Vlad talking about. Who cares? He says some shit that y'all didn't like. Y'all check him on it and keep it moving. See? Because... His inability to be able to uh, take the analogy of a stone being used to kill Satan, i.e. the other white meat in other cultures that have suppressed black America, shows that there's a, there's a disconnect with the analogy and with the um, etymology of certain words. 
the literary presence is not there. Dude ain't talented. But he understands business. So he's building an empire. And you could do the same thing. That's what we got to take into account. So I'm not going to be on here too much longer, man. But here's the thing. If you focus on you, you build your situation, you build your presence, you put products and services out there, you will get to a place where when you say move, the culture will move. See, they'll move. Media ain't going to support you. We already know that. <clears throat> if you anti-American and you ain't hollering the inclusion the illusion of inclusion. You understand? If you ain't hollering, kumbaya, let's all get along. If you ain't hollering, you know, all lives matter. LGBTQ is 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 important and priority in everybody's life. If you ain't hollering them cold words, they ain't fooling with you. So you're gonna have to build your situation in such a manner where you can be the black Robin Hood, take from the rich and give to the poor. But to be an emotionally bankrupt Robin Hood, black Robin Hood, and you're running up on somebody who's got power in some, in this instance, Vlad has his own powerful network. You're spinning your wheels and you're emotionally downtrodden your own demise or you're bringing about, you're downtrodding your own efforts and bringing about your own demise because you're exerting energy into something that's not going to give you nothing back. It's a black hole. It's not worth it. Y'all said what y'all said. Y'all got off. It's not the first time. It's not going to be a large body of people who going who gonna, to who gonna move the way y'all want to move. And you just got to keep penetrating the market and doing what you do, man. So, culture vulturing is going to continue because it's going on in music business, it's going on in sports, it's going on in the media, it's going on in dance, it's going on in literary works, it's going on in the arts, it's going on in plays and dramas, it's going on in politics, it's going on in education, it's going on in health, all areas of society. Black folks are responsible for. But the culture vultures will continue to rob the culture because they don't know anything of value. That movie, The Terminator, was not written by somebody white. That was written by a black woman. I'm sorry, not The Terminator. No, it might have been The Terminator and The Mono. I think it was The Matrix. The Matrix was written by a black woman. Now, she's very intelligent, so hopefully she got her money. But them folks tried to, they swindled her. They tried to put pin. See, we just ain't getting the credit that we deserve. You see? Stay focused, and then you'll be able to slap somebody like Vlad, but you'll be able to do it in such a way where he really feel that impact, because you ain't going to be able to affect his bottom line. Hey, man, I'm cool with Water the Digital Dope, man. Check me out. At the blog is hiphopdead.com. Look for me at the digitaldopeman.com. Peace and stay blessed. Holla.